Yes, there is always a protocol for everything. There is always a protocol. The question is, is there a protocol to ask uh, for something, for a dua? Yes, there is always a protocol. There is always a way. There is always a... Um, adapt. Adapt never finishes. You enter into tariqat, the tasawuf, to understand what this adapt and protocol is. If you don't understand that protocol, you don't know who is it that you're asking. You will not know your Allah. You have no adapt towards your Allah. It's finished. You have knowledge, but you have no adapt towards your Lord. Shaitan was kicked out from divine presence. But this is a very fine matter, especially when you enter into the Naqshbandi Tariqat, it's a very fine matter. At the end of the day, it is a question of faith also. There is Dalil, and there is tradition of 1400 years, but not too many they can carry it, because there is not too much belief, there is not too much strength there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, find the best means to come close to me. Seek the best ways. Like I said, us saying Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Awliya Allah saying Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim the Prophet saying Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim the Angel saying Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself saying Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim completely different words they are the same it's different are we understanding this Wahhabi is saying no it's all the same that's Wahhabi biggest cancer that came to mankind to Islam Allah is describing them in Suratul Munafikun Clearly, it was an order saying, if you want Allah's forgiveness, go and ask the Prophet to intercede on your behalf. But they refuse because they're arrogant and they're stubborn. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. If we just say La ilaha illallah, our faith is not complete. Our faith is not complete. We say, La ilaha illallah, our faith is not complete. Our faith is only complete when we say, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu The shahadat part, just to say it with the tongue, to say it with the heart, it requires something else. Now for it to be part of our lifestyle now, Muhammad Rasulullah, part of our lifestyle, there's something else too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, were it not for you, were it not for you, I would not have created the universes, the stars. So everything Allah has created for his holy beloved one, alayhi salatu wa salam. Which other uh, best means can you approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the door of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam. Understand? You have to. Now you enter into Tariqat to discover the door of the Prophet. But why is it that every Tariqat is following and using the name of the founder of that that is given by the Prophet? 41 Tariqats. Why is he opening up 40 Tariqats to Hazrat Ali? And one to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. And why is he naming them according to the founders of those tariqats? Instead of just calling it Tariqatul Muhammadiyah, 
which it will come only in the Ahir Zaman, when the 40 tariqats, they collapse into one. One time in history at the end, at the Ahir of the Ahir Zaman. This is enough for everyone to understand now the way, the door to the Holy Prophet, we're talking about the divine protocol. You add up, it is through the door of that saint. So, <clears throat> in a way, people say, Murid saying, uh, to pray istikhara and doing all these kinds of things. We never say anything. But, ask yourself, use your own common sense. If the way of your shaykh is true, the way of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, meaning if the Prophet والسلام, is here, would you pray istikhara? You would not. You could ask. Now the whole problem is, but Prophet is not here. It's not the whole problem. Prophet is here. It's Hazir and his Nazir. And his teachings continue. Physically, he's not here. But his spirit is still here. He has inheritors. Which one of his inheritors are you holding on to? Why can't we ask directly from Allah? You can. Everybody can. Everything has a direct connection to Allah. Every single man has a connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to us than a jugular vein. But, do we know that there are no veils and obstacles and things that block us between us and Allah? Do we know or we don't know? Do we know that we are weak, sinful creatures? Yes. That is an obstacle. Right off, that is an obstacle. And Allah is saying, seek the best means. Everywhere in the Quran and Kareem, Allah is saying, ask Allah and His Prophet. Allah and His Prophet. Allah and His Prophet. And showing. Talking about there is no intercession. For who? For those ones who pray to other lords. There's no intercession. But even in the verse of the throne, Hayat Kursi, there is no intercession except those that he gave permission to. That is a tremendous verse. So who he gave the best permission to? That one that even the prophets are going to ask for his intercession. That even Hazrat Isa, Ruhullah, is going to ask for his intercession. Hazrat Musa is going to ask for his intercession. Hazrat Adam, alayhi salam, is going to ask for his intercession. Who is that? The Holy Prophet, where is Ummah? Now we can ask, like you can try to make the phone call here, but if you don't have Wi Fi here, you can try as much as you can, you're not going to get through. There is a protocol, and there is ways on top of ways on top of ways on top of ways also for you to have. That one now to speak to you, especially in the Hanafi Mazhab now. Because if the Imam stands up to recite, he recites it for the entire Jamaat. In the Shafi'i Mazhab is not. The Imam recite and then the Jamaat recite again. They have their own ways of doing it. I'm not saying uh, this is right and this is wrong, but this is our way. So, and there are things that you can. People are following a Shaykh now. Just because you follow a shaykh, just because you follow a prophet, just because you follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does this mean that your connection is strong? No. Then we have to check ourselves all the time. We're calling ourselves Muslim because we say the shahadat. But our shahadat has to be protected by the namaz. The namaz has to be protected by the saum. 
That has to be protected by the zakat. That has to be protected by the hajj. It has to be protected. The sunnats are there to all protect it. And the whole point is to protect the sunnah. This is what calls us, makes us to be known as Ahli Sunnah or Jamaat. If we don't protect the sunnah, then all we're left is with fars, then there's going to be splinter over and over and over again, as it is happening now. For 1400 years, they were very particular what is sunnah and what is not. And so, Inshallah, may what we ask for will be good for us. That much should be enough, Inshallah. Yes, Ali.